All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Jeff Sachs, and I'm going to be talking about voice controlled home automation in JavaScript. Hopefully, everyone's got a full cup of coffee ready for uh, day three of the conference. Uh, so, quick outline uh, for my talk. First off, if you have any questions at any point, please just shout out, raise your hand, get my attention somehow. If you've got a question, someone else probably has the same question, and it probably means I skipped over something. Uh, so please just, just yell out at any time. Uh, so I'm going to have a quick discussion of home automation and what I mean by that for this talk. Then I'm going to do the same for voice technologies. Uh, then we're going to start, uh, and we're going to build a skill for the Amazon Echo. Uh, we're actually going to build a few iterations of a skill uh, then we're going to connect it up to some devices uh, that are in my home, might actually be in your home too. Uh, and then at the end, we'll watch a video to, to see everything working. Uh, real quick about me, uh, you can find me on Twitter or GitHub. Uh, I've tweeted out a link to this presentation, and I also put it in the conference Slack channel. So uh, towards the end, I start showing a lot of code, and I might be moving quickly. Uh, so just know that you can pull down these slides after the talk or during the talk, uh, and all, all the code will be there to, to look at in, in more detail. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at DRW Trading Group in Chicago. I've been there about seven years now, and I write a lot of JavaScript, and then a little bit of Ruby, Clojure, Java, um, occasionally some other languages sneak in there as well. Uh, and so when I'm not at work, uh, I like to build small little side projects to help me solve my very first world problems, like not being able to find my TV remote. Uh, so that's really what this talk is about, um, controlling my TV at home through the Amazon Echo. So home automation. Um, I think this phrase can really mean a lot of different things. Uh, so one, one way to think about home automation is sort of the do-it-yourself, uh, buy an Arduino, buy some wires, a breadboard, while you're up something cool. Um, there was actually a, a pretty interesting talk about that yesterday. Uh, that is really cool stuff, but it's not what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I'm talking more about smart devices, things you can go to the store, go on Amazon, uh, and purchase. And by the term smart device, really means you can just connect it up to either other devices or something that you can control through an app or a web interface. Uh, and so I'm going to quickly talk through a couple examples of, of smart devices now. Um, so the Philips Hue connected bulb, does anyone have any of these at home, a few of you? Uh, so in my apartment at home, I have light bulbs, and they're very binary. They can either be on or they can be off. Uh, with the Philips Hue light bulb, uh, it's quite different. You can choose uh, 16 million different colors to light up. Uh, and you can also change the brightness on there. So very different from just a simple on and off. Uh, you can also control these lights from anywhere through an app. And then you can do some cool things. So geofencing is a term that means uh, when you arrive at home, you can get your lights to automatically turn on. Or when you leave, they can turn off. Uh, you can also set up scheduling. So you could use your lights as an alarm clock in the morning, uh, have them uh, turn on as, as you want to wake up and uh, increase the brightness. Uh, and then you can also get really fancy uh, and sync up the light bulbs with music. And if you get some water fountains, it would be like living at the Bellagio in Vegas. So a lot of cool things you can do with the, the Hue connected light bulb. Uh, another smart device is the Nest learning thermostat. And what this thermostat really aims to do is learn the temperatures you like and then save you money by being smart about uh, how to run the air conditioner or the heater. Uh, so for example, if in a typical week uh, you're not at home, you know, Monday through Friday during working hours, the thermostat can actually uh, kind of go easy. Let's say it's the summer uh, and not blast the air conditioner full blast, uh, but it can learn what time you tend to come home and kick on the AC uh, soon enough before you arrive that it's at the temperature you like uh, when you arrive, but maybe a few degrees warmer while you're not there, uh, which, which saves you money. Uh, you can also set up some alerts. So we're here in Minnesota, and I've heard it gets cold in the winter here. Uh, so let's say you go on vacation in the dead of winter, and you want to make sure your pipes don't freeze. You can set up an alert to let you know if the temperature drops to a certain value, 
Uh, and then at that point, maybe you call your neighbor to, to come flush the toilet so the pipes don't burst. Uh, another example of a device, it's, it's more of like a, a whole suite of, of uh, devices, is the Samsung SmartThings hub. And what, what this attempts to do is sort of be, be your one hub for all of your smart devices. So Samsung sells a whole bunch of things, and you can also hook up uh, products from other companies. Uh, so you can hook up your lighting, your security system, your entertainment system, uh, a whole number of sensors, and then control it all through an app, uh, whether you're home or not. So uh, Samsung attempts to kind of be like the, the centralized controller for uh, your entire home. Uh, so there's, there's many other devices out there, and there's, there's more and more every day. So there's a lot of opportunity to uh, use the JavaScript or any other programming language you know to uh, hook up with, with devices in your home. Uh, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about some voice services. Um, so cars are a great place to use your voice. Uh, so rather than uh, having to take your eyes off the road and reach over to your radio controllers, uh, in Ford has a, a product called the Sync, which has actually been been available since 2007. Uh, and nowadays, most car manufacturers have uh, similar functionality. But what the Sync lets you do is make calls, send texts with just your voice. Uh, you can also interact with the navigation system, control the music or the climate. And so the way the way the Ford Sync works, um, there's a button on the steering wheel that you press. And then you say something along the lines of uh, radio preset two. And then the car most likely will respond back and say, I didn't understand what you said. Um, ho hopefully, it did understand, and then the radio changes. Uh, and these, these systems do get better over time. Uh, so as uh, more and more cars get these, they'll become better and better and, and more effective. Um, and, and having the the voice control in the car really can, can save real, real lives. So it's, it's a pretty cool use of the technology. Another place uh, that you see voice services are uh, in your phone or on your computer. So if you're in the Apple world, uh, there's Siri. The Microsoft world has Cortana. There's also Google Now. There's probably some more that uh, I'm not mentioning. Uh, these services are sometimes referred to as digital assistants. Uh, and so they let you do a lot of the same things that the Ford Sync lets you do in the car. You can make phone calls, you can send texts, uh, set calendar uh, events, set timers, control your music. Uh, a lot of things you can do uh, just with your voice so you don't have to navigate through uh, all the different apps and, and UIs. Um, so another uh, sort of area where voice services come into play is with this guy, the Amazon Echo. So we're going to talk about this thing a lot for the rest of the talk uh, and go into a lot more detail. Um, so what this thing is, it's kind of a, a fancy speaker that's a little pricey, about $179. Um, fortunately, I was given mine as a gift. Um, and the way it works is it sits here, and it's always listening for you to say Alexa. Um, you can also set it to, to be Amazon or Echo. Uh, but for right now, you cannot set any arbitrary word to be uh, sort of what's known as the wake word. So I've got, if you see the red light on the top, that means I, I muted it. Uh, otherwise, it would be lighting up and talking back to me every time I say Alexa. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see what it can do. Alexa, what's the weather for tomorrow? Weather alert for Chicago. There's a flash flood watch in effect Friday, August 12th, 10 AM to Saturday. August 13th, 12 a.m. Tomorrow, you'll see intermittent clouds and can expect a high of 81 and a low of 71. All right, so uh, we got the weather report for Chicago. Doesn't sound very good. Um, fortunately, I'm going somewhere else for the weekend. Um, the reason it gave the weather for Chicago is because it's hooked up to my Amazon account and it knows that I live in Chicago. Uh, let's, let's try another one. Alexa, what time is it? It's 9.09 a.m. All right, good on time so far. Uh, Alexa, who was the 23rd president? The 23rd US president was Benjamin Harrison. Uh, so kids really like this uh, because you can pretty much ask it anything. Um, if you think about when you 
when you Google something and they, they put the little box at the top with the answer, the Wikipedia um, information, those are the sorts of, of things that, um, that the Alexa can answer for you. So it's good with random trivia. It's fun uh, at home if I'm watching TV and I'm always curious how old someone is. Uh, that's something that, that it can, can usually answer for me. Um, let's try this one. Alexa, what's your birthday? Ooh, didn't get it. Try again. Alexa, what's your birthday? November 6, 2014. I'm a Scorpio. So it's got a little bit of personality programmed in, and that, that birthday is actually the, the day that it was initially released. Uh, and then let's, uh, let's see if uh, we can get it to tell a joke. Alexa, tell a joke. What fish is the most expensive? Goldfish. So it's, it's programmed with uh, some, some corny, punny jokes. All right, so let's talk about uh, what's actually going on here. Um, so when, when I speak to the device, it uh, sends what I say. As soon as I say the wake word, as soon as I say Alexa, it starts streaming uh, a recording off to the cloud. And it goes to what's known as the Alexa voice service. Uh, so real quick, before I move on through the rest of this picture, uh, what Amazon has done is they've, they've set up uh, the, the voice service so that other people can actually make uh, the same product they make. Uh, they don't necessarily want to sell uh, as many echoes as possible, but they want as many people as possible sending information through the Alexa voice service. Uh, one possible reason for that is you can order things through here. Um, and so to sort of illustrate what this voice service is, um, there's uh, a website out there, echosim.io. Uh, so you don't even need to have an echo to, to play around with Alexa. So let's, let's just try uh, one of these. Alexa, who was the fifth president? Try again. Alexa, who was the fifth US president? Try again. Alexa, what time is it? All right, well, that's clearly working very well. But uh, you, you could imagine that it, it responds back just like the device does. So this website is built on the exact same technology as this device. Um, and so that's, that's pretty cool, because Amazon can encourage other people to build other devices that, that sit upon the same um, Alexa voice service. Uh, so that's sort of uh, number two in this, in this diagram is the Echo sending a request to the Alexa voice service. Once the request gets there, Amazon does their, their magic, uh, and they figure out what it is you're trying to do. So there's a number of, of built-in things, like, like the trivia questions and the weather. And Amazon just kind of handles that stuff. Um, but you can also build your own skill or um, enable third-party skills. And so in this, in this picture, I've got the person saying, Alexa, tell Pandora to play music. Pandora is what's known as an invocation name. And so when that request gets to the Alexa voice service, Amazon figures out what the invocation name is. They then figure out uh, where they need to send that request. So uh, the Pandora skill uh, can either be set up as a Lambda function or an HTTP server capable of, of uh, uh, receiving a post request. And Amazon will send either the post or invoke the Lambda. Then it's up to the skill to send a response back to uh, the Alexa voice service. Uh, and then at that point, the voice service sends a response back to the initial requester, whether it's uh, the Echo device or the Echo SIM website or something else. Uh, and then it's up to that device to uh, speak the answer. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what's going on um, and, and how the Alexa works. Uh, so a couple facts. Um, it's been just over a year, June 25th, 2015, since they released the Alexa Skills Kit. And what the Skills Kit kit lets you do is write your own skill. And I think that's what makes uh, this device, this service, extremely powerful. Um, you can just set up a Lambda function 
and do whatever you want uh, as a result of something you say to the device. Uh, so there have been over 1,400 published skills uh, since they, they released the skills kit. Some examples are Pandora, uh, Domino's Pizza has a skill. Uh, maybe you've seen there's a TV commercial, guy sitting on the couch, unable to reach his phone, I guess, and just kind of says, Alexa, have Domino's send me a pizza. Um, there's also Uber, so you can uh, order an Uber without uh, going into your phone. And my favorite skill, which, which is not published, it's just a private skill, is uh, Jeff's TV. Uh, so now that you know you can build a skill, let's uh, go ahead and, and kind of do the hello world of uh, an Alexa skill. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you guys in the back can see this. So this is our uh, sort of hello world AWS Lambda function. Um, one cool note about Lambda is the first million uh, invocations a month are in their free tier. So if you're just playing around at home uh, setting up a Lambda function, it's not going to cost you anything uh, unless you get uh, really busy. Uh, so the Lambda function is invoked with two arguments. First one's an event, and we're going to ignore it for uh, this first demo. We'll look at, at it later. Uh, second thing is a context. And there's a succeed function on the context. And you can simply call succeed and pass it a response object that uh, corresponds to what the Alexa voice service is expecting back. So in this example, uh, we're sending a response object with some output speech, and then we're setting should end session to true. What, what that means is as soon as we send this response, uh, the Alexa voice service can kind of forget about this session. Uh, so if you think about something like uh, a Jeopardy skill which exists, you might want to keep track of how many questions a user's gotten correct. And there's actually a way to respond with state and then receive that state the next time your Lambda is invoked. Uh, but for today, we're just going to uh, say should end session is true, and then just deal with the very simple request response. Uh, so the output speech object, we're setting to plain text. There is a, a way that you can more finely control the way um, Alexa talks back to you. Uh, you, can, you can put pauses in or pronunciations, uh, but again, for today, we're just going to look at plain text. And we're responding back with, hello, this is the first demo. So that's, that's all. We want to be able to uh, start up the demo and have Alexa talk back to us. Let's try it out. Alexa, start the first demo. Hello, this is the first demo. So there it is, the hello world of uh, the Amazon Echo. Um, so that's, that's not terribly exciting. Um, just, just the real, real simple um, base skill. Uh, so let's build on that a little bit, and we're gonna, we're gonna next do uh, a repeater skill. So we're gonna say something, and then we're gonna get Alexa to repeat it back. Uh, I should have muted this. Sorry, there is nothing to repeat. <laughs> All right. So, um, so when you're building one of these skills, you get to define uh, the interaction model. So I mentioned that you get to ha create an invocation name for your skill. Uh, you also get to define what phrases that Amazon can expect a user to say. And this really helps Amazon uh, parse the request and then send information onto your skill about what was actually said. So there are things called utterances. And they really just map uh, an intent name to a phrase. So in this case, we're going to have one utterance. We're going to name it uh, the repeat name utterance. And then the phrase that we're going to say is to say followed by any name. Uh, and so the curly braces there represent what's called a slot. Uh, and then we're, we're naming our slot name. Uh, and so then we have to set up a list of our intents. So here we've got one intent. It's called repeat name. Uh, it's got one slot, which is the name of which is name. I'm going to try to say name a few more times. Uh, and then the type here is Amazon.us first name. And what this is, it's setting an expectation for Amazon for what that name slot is going to be, what it's likely 
uh, phrase that's said uh, to match up with. So Amazon has a number of built-in slots, uh, US first name, US state, uh, number, date, duration, uh, things like that. Uh, and then you can also build custom slots, and we're, we're going to do that in a little bit. Uh, so just to, to show you, um, when you're actually setting up a skill, you get sort of a screen like this. And you can set up the name for your skill. And this is the name that someone would search for if they're trying to enable your skill. Then you've got the invocation name. In this case, uh, it's repeater. Uh, and then the two things I just talked about, we've got our intent schema up here on the top, and then on the bottom, uh, our utterances. And so for this example, we just have one utterance, uh, keeping it really simple. Uh, at the end of this talk, we're going to have a much longer list, uh, and you'll be able to, to see the power in defining uh, many different utterances. So the more specific you can define your interface, the better Amazon is able to do it at parsing out what was said and passing along the correct information uh, to the skill. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, the next Lambda function here. So this is just, uh, we're trying to repeat whatever that, that name value was. So this should look very similar to our Hello World, except the text that we're going to send back, we're actually going to reach into that event object, into the request, into the intent, into the slots, we're going to grab the name and the value of the name. And uh, so let's let's give this a shot. Alexa, ask the repeater to say Jeffrey. I heard you say Jeffrey. So Jeffrey's a name. Very easy uh, for Alexa to to parse that. Uh, just to kind of learn more about what that Amazon.us first name is really doing, let's try something that's not a name. Alexa, ask the repeater to say baseball. I heard you say baseball. So baseball, clearly not a US first name, but it's one word, so it sort of matches the form of a US first name. And there are no other names close to baseball. So when Amazon hears baseball, they, they can't match it to another US first name. They just send that value along anyways. Uh, and so this is where. Uh, you really want to be specific with, with what you're listening for, because uh, you might, might end up with the wrong value coming through. Uh, let's try something that's two words and see what happens. Alexa, ask the repeater to say, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I heard you say, Minnesota. So in that case, uh, I said two words, and Alexa was looking for one word. So it just dropped off Minneapolis and sent Minnesota on uh, to the skill. Uh, and then we responded back with Minnesota, and that's what it said. Uh, let's try something that's not a name, but is close to a name. Alexa, ask the repeater to say tennis. I heard you say tennis. Ooh, that's never happened before. Let's try again. Alexa, ask the repeater to say tennis. I heard you say tennis. Nice. Um, <laughs> so usually, um, every other time I've, I've said that, it'll say either Titus, Thomas, or Dennis. Apparently today, um, Alexa's into tennis, so uh, that's OK. Um, so, so now uh, we're starting to build more complicated skills. We can handle uh, different input from Alexa. We can build an interaction model. Uh, but all this stuff runs in the cloud. This, this is running on AWS Lambda. And in order to control devices in our home, uh, we could open up a port into our, our home network. But that's probably a bad idea for uh, a lot of security reasons. Uh, another way to get information from the AWS cloud into our home network uh, is to use another AWS service. Uh, and so we're going to use the uh, Simple Queue service, also known as SQS. Uh, and this allows you to send a message to a queue receive a message, uh, and then delete a message. So uh, true to its name, it's pretty simple. And so now uh, we're going to add on to our skill and try to send that name that we're saying uh, to the queue. And then we'll write a listener that we can run 
uh, maybe on a Raspberry Pi in our home or on some other device in our home to pull that value off. Uh, and then once we get that value in our home network, we can do whatever we want with it from there. So a little bit uh, more code this time. This is our uh, name sender skill, um, third skill now. So uh, we can set up uh, some queue information at the top. We're going to require in the AWS SDK in order to um, have easy access to the, to the SQS. And when our Lambda is invoked here, we're going to pull out that value again, our name value. Then we're going to set up some parameters for um, the send message function on SQS. We're going to set that value as our message body, uh, and then also the location of our queue. Uh, and then we're going we're to send that message and wait for a callback and figure out if, if we had an error. We're going to have Alexa tell us that there was an error. Otherwise, we're going to have Alexa tell us uh, the value that it sent uh, to that queue. Uh, so real quick, we're going to look now. We're, we're out of the cloud. This is, this is going to run uh, in Node.js on a Raspberry Pi uh, in our home or on my laptop in a second. And this is our, our listening code. Uh, so we're, we're calling receive message. If we receive a message, we're just going to call console.log with the body. So it's just going to write that to standard out. And the way receive message works is it's actually a long poll and not very long. You can only wait up to 20 seconds. So we're going to wait 20 seconds, and we're going to have a, a maximum number of messages uh, as one. So we're just going to try to get one message and write it to standard out and then be done. So uh, let's kick off our listener and try it out. Alexa, ask the name sender to say Jeffrey. I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. All right, let's try that again. Let me just kick off the listener again. Alexa, ask the name sender to send Jeffrey. Hmm, I can't find the answer to the question I heard. All right, we'll try one more time. Alexa, ask the name sender to say Jeffrey. Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question I heard. All right, well, another wonderful demo. Um, what, what should have happened is uh, you should have seen Jeffrey get printed out to uh, standard out here, and Alexa should have responded back uh, saying that it uh, sent Jeffrey to SQS. Um, so the, that's, that's the end of uh, bad demos. Uh, we'll, we'll watch a video later to, uh, so you guys can be sure that this stuff actually works. Um, all right, so now that we can send data to our home network, let's take a little, little time out from uh, the Echo. We'll give Alexa a little bit of a rest. And let's, uh, let's move over to some smart devices in our home. So how many of you have a TiVo in your home? A couple, one. Um, how many of you, uh, probably not many because none of you have a TiVo, but does anyone know that TiVo actually has a TCP protocol that you can uh, connect up to? Um, so anything you can do with your TV remote, you can actually uh, connect a TCP socket up to your TiVo and send all of those commands uh, to your TiVo. So it's a pretty simple uh, plain text protocol. You just send a command and one or more parameters. Uh, a couple examples here, there's the uh, force ch, force channel command, and you give it the number of the channel you want TiVo to uh, turn to. Uh, there's the teleport guide, so this this will bring up the TV guide on your screen. Uh, there's also a teleport live TV. It's not nearly as cool as it sounds. Uh, it, it it just brings you back to live TV. It doesn't doesn't take you right to the event you're watching. Uh, uh, so in order to uh, connect up to TiVo, uh, you could just use Telnet. Um, that would work great, but probably not the easiest user interface. So what I'm going to walk through here is some code setting up a, an Express app. So we'll have a, a TCP port, uh, HTTP port open, and then we can just send some GET requests in order to control our TiVo. Uh, so what we're doing in, in this code example, we're connecting a TCP socket to our, our TiVo device. 
Uh, and then we're going to set up two get request routes. One is for uh, changing the channel. Uh, that's the first one here. And then when we get that request, we're just going to uh, write the, uh, the command and parameter off to the device. Uh, and then we also have another route here to handle sort of any arbitrary command. Um, so that makes it real easy uh, to uh, you know, control things on your TiVo. Uh, of course, TiVo is not very useful without a TV. So the Sharp Aquos uh, actually has a TCP protocol as well. Um, not many TVs do, but, but fortunately, the, the TV I, I owned when I started doing all this uh, did have a TCP protocol, which is pretty cool. Um, again, you, you send a command and a parameter. In this case, they both have to be four characters in length. Um, they, don't, they don't let you teleport, but there's a power command, uh, input command, volume, and mute. Uh, the Aquos API says that you can actually uh, request the volume and get a response back, uh, but it never works. So uh, similar to the TiVo, we're, we're just not really going to worry about uh, responses coming back from the socket. We're just going to fire and forget, send off our request, and, and hope the device uh, does what, it's, what, it, what it says it's going to do. Uh, so in order to interact with our TV, uh, before we add more uh, routes to our Express app, just going to show you a, a little wrapper around uh, the raw socket object. So just have a function here that takes a socket and then returns an object with a few functions on it, one for mute, one for power, set volume, and change volume. Uh, the one maybe interesting thing to note here is the, the power command is going to both turn on the TV and change the input. Um, and it's going to set the input to whatever uh, TiVo is running on. So when you, when you go to change the channel, you probably want your TV to be on. Uh, so any channel request, uh, we're just going to turn on the TV's power, change the input to the TiVo, and then change the channel. Uh, and if the TV's on and you tell it to turn on, it's going to stay on. So that works great. Um, so similar to the TV, there's another function here to wrap up the TiVo socket. Uh, it's just got a send command function and a set channel function. Uh, and then at, at the bottom, this is just showing uh, wrapping up those socket objects uh, and then passing them into our, our build app function. Uh, so this is our, our uh, Express app with uh, just the, the TiVo routes in there again. Um, but here you see I, th I threw in uh, passing true to the power function on the TV. Uh, and now a quick look at uh, some routes to handle uh, the TV. So we've got a volume one on top, and it can handle uh, up or down, which will change the volume by, by one. So that's like if you press the volume button on, on your remote. Uh, and it can also handle just a specific uh, volume number. So if you know you want your volume to be extra loud, uh, this will allow you to set it to a specific number. Uh, and there's mute and unmute, uh, and then a power off command. So. Uh, you might still be wondering, like, okay, why, why the Express app? Like, you know, if we're just going to uh, be connecting to our devices from this uh, AWS SQS listener, like, what's the deal with the Express app? And so the real reason is um, I built a web-based TV remote long before the Amazon Echo existed. Um, looks a little bit like this. Uh, basically, I got a little tired of remembering what all the channels were. Um, even though I only watch about eight or 10 channels. Uh, so I kind of set up a little remote with the TV guide built in. Uh, and then it's, it's like one click, and you got the TV turned on, goes to the right input, and turns on the channel. Um, and then it, it turns out to be pretty cool if, let's say, it's, it's March, and March Madness is going on, and you're a big basketball fan like I am. Uh, you can very quickly build a custom remote with just like the four channels that the games are on. Uh, and so that, that ends up being uh, a, a nice way to show off to friends that aren't programmers. <laughs> All right, so now, now that we've got um, our, our server our, uh, you know, server side in our home network ready to talk to our devices, it's time to build up uh, a more complicated uh, 
Amazon Echo skill. So we need uh, a couple intents here. We're going to have an intent to change the channel. And we're giving this a list of channels as our slot. Um, so what that looks like, uh, this is our custom slot. And it's, it's just a, a pipe separated list of channels. And so as, uh, as we tried to show with the US first name, uh, didn't work that well. But uh, when, you, when you tell Amazon what to look for, it really helps it understand what you say in order to pass the correct value on. Uh, so that's our list of channels. Uh, back to our intents. We've got an off intent, volume up, volume down, volume set. And for the volume set, we've got a slot that's an Amazon number, because uh, that's what we're going to be expecting. Uh, then we've got a back, a mute, and an unmute. Um, so let's look at our phrases. And uh, it's important to note that you can have more than one utterance per intent. Uh, so let's say uh, you forget. The first time I built this, I had just turn on for the channel. And then I found myself, I kept saying to Alexa, change to. Uh, and Alexa would say back, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so adding more utterances uh, make up for uh, users that can't remember your interface. And then it turns out the, the better you build your interface, the more specific, the more uh, forgiving, uh, then the better experience that your user is going to have uh, using your skill. So we've got a number of phrases for the volume. We can say turn up the volume. We can say make it louder. We can say be louder. Uh, similarly, to turn the volume down, there's a, a few different ways you can do that. Uh, and you, you can kind of see the rest of the list here are sort of all the phrases that uh, we're building our skill to accept. So we're going to uh, walk through the skill code. Um, it's broken apart on, on three different slides here. Uh, but I'll kind of explain the main idea and then quickly walk through the code. So the main idea for our skill here is we receive a request. And then we're going to pull out of the request object the invocation name. Uh, so back to that. Uh, list we were just looking at a second ago. There's a number of different invocation types. And then once we know what uh, invocation name uh, we are given, or an intent name, I should say, uh, we're going to send information to the SQS uh, and then respond back to Alexa. So pretty similar to our name sender skill, but there's just a number of different intents that we're going to handle. Uh, so here, uh, we're just setting up the SQS stuff, and then we're passing our request object into a handle intent function, and also passing a callback uh, to handle our response text. Um, so here is our handle intent function. This is where uh, the, the action kind of happens, and we're, we're pulling out the intent name. And then we've got a map of intent names to uh, functions. So down at the bottom, we're just going to invoke the function for our intent name. Um, and I am doing absolutely no error handling. Um, if, if Alexa doesn't understand what I say and it comes back saying there was an error, I'll probably just grab the remote and change the channel myself. Um, good failure mode for, for this skill. So um, if you look at the, the off intent here, uh, we're going to call this invoke SQS function. And we're going to give it what, what looks uh, very much like our HTTP route that we set up a, a minute ago, the slash TV, slash power, slash off. Uh, and then we're also passing into this function, uh, now turning off the TV. And that is what we want Alexa to say after uh, it sends information to SQS. Uh, then down at the bottom, we've got a set volume and a change channel function. Uh, and I'll show you guys that real quick here. Uh, so to change the channel, uh, we're, we're pulling out that slot value for the channel. Uh, and then we're going to look up. We've got a map of our channels uh, going from the channel name to a channel number. Uh, and we're also, uh, because Amazon will, will send through a value even if it didn't match uh, the slot type, uh, we could actually just give it a specific channel number. And then we're going we're gonna to 
try to parse that before we, we look in this map. So if we've got uh, an integer value, we'll return that. Otherwise, we'll look up in our channel map, find the channel number we care about, uh, and then send that to SQS uh, in the slash TV slash CH uh, slash channel number route. Uh, and then volume is uh, pretty similar, but a little, little simpler. Uh, we're pulling out the value of the volume slot uh, and sending that uh, off to SQS. So I think we've written enough JavaScript or looked at enough JavaScript. Uh, so let's look at some bash now. Uh, so the way we're going to hook all this up, um, we're going to have a, a while true loop. Uh, and the reason for that is our, our SQS listener, uh, again, it's doing a long pull. So it's going to pull for 20 seconds. Uh, if it doesn't get a message, it's just going to exit. If it does get a message, uh, it'll just write that to standard out. Uh, from there, we're going to use the xargs command which is just going to allow us to append the value from SQS to the end of this uh, curl command. So that's why uh, in our skill, the value we're sending to SQS look like our HTTP route, um, sort of just like a, a clever way to glue this stuff together without actually having to, to integrate our SQS listener uh, code into our um, Express app uh, that talks to the, the TiVo and the, the TV. Uh, so I've got a few links on these slides, again, with a lot of references. Um, and so you know, if, if you want get, to get started, build your own skill, a lot of information at these links. Um, and the, a link to the slides is in the conference um, Slack room. And so now, a demo that hopefully will work. I'm uh, going to show you guys a video. And hopefully uh, you remember this talk the next time uh, you reach for your remote and you can't find it. Alexa, tell the TV to turn on NBC. Changing the channel to 605. Alexa, tell the TV to turn on WGN. Changing the channel to 609. Alexa, Tell the TV to set the volume to 24. Changing the volume to 24. Alexa, tell the TV to mute. Muting. Alexa, tell the TV to turn off. Now turning off the TV. All right, so we, uh, thanks. We still have about 10 minutes or, or so, so if anyone has, has any questions, we can do that now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, um, if, if I wanted to, um, I, th I think my girl. Yeah, I I, uh, I think my girlfriend's actually working from home today, so I could I could totally freak her out right now. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah. Send it back and forth. Let's see here if I can find. Uh, so uh, let's see. You can send. Uh, I should probably zoom in. Uh, where did that go? Hold on. So you can send um, what are called session attributes. Uh, and so when you uh, respond, uh, you just set up some attributes there. And then the next time you get invoked on that same session, so when the, the same user, uh, if they continue to use your skill, like if they wait several hours, it's not going to come back. But if they use it uh, right away, then those values will be in the next request object that you send. So you can still yeah, you, your time. yeah you, you, could, you could build your own persistence and, and you know, track 
who your user is and, and what you want to do there. Any other questions? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I want to kind of like set up the lights and, and do some, some fancy stuff with that. I just uh, haven't made the investment in the fancy light bulbs yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did a project in college many years ago with the Roomba, but I haven't I haven't done anything. Oh, neat! So you could you could set up your own sort of app to control drive the Roomba around and stuff. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> All right, thank you guys.